have been handing over new F registration cars today, but none will have looked quite like this. The Morris Minor, last produced in 1971, is just about to celebrate its 40th birthday, with a promise to remain a British institution well into the next century. Here in Bath, even the most tired miner can be given a new lease of life, painstakingly rebuilt by hand, both inside and out, geared up for the 90s with uprated suspension, brakes and engine. And with a top speed of 100, there's no shortage of customers for models like this. Our customers sort of go down from, from royalty to the local dustman. And I mean, essentially, it was a, a user-friendly car, I suppose. It's a car that uh, has an unbelievable ability to start and do the things that normal cars do. It's also extremely durable. In other words, it doesn't fall apart like a piece of plastic nowadays. It's a real motor car. This new model attracted a great deal of interest. When the miner was launched in 1948, it was an instant success. More than one and a half million sold worldwide to everyone from the district nurse to the Archbishop of Canterbury. Today, Morris owners still meet regularly to admire cars which have become part of the family. The 100,000 still on the road is proof, they say, that... for 1948, the exciting new Morris. This minor is an ideal car for the modern woman. There's a spacious interior behind those flowing lines, and plenty of room for all those bits and bobs too. Well, things have changed since this, the first Morris minor appeared in 1948. Not just the cars, clothes, or even the women. But somehow, Morris Miners seem to have survived the fickleness of fashion and tests of time. Sir Alec built the first prototype in 1943. Now called the Miner, still had its American look, but at Nuffield's insistence, had its modern power unit replaced by a 30s design. There was, however, one other major change. In the two. Seen as a four inch wide band down the bonnet and on early cars as a spacer in the bumper. The car was an instant success despite the resistance of senior management. It spawned many derivatives a four door, a convertible, vans, and of course the ever distinctive wooden framed Morris Traveller. But the best known miner was the Thousand introduced in 1956. In this form, production peaked in 58, and with remarkably few changes, ended in 1971. Today, the miner has attained cult car status. The Morris Miner Owners Club is dedicated to keeping the many thousands of cars on the road. At rallies like this one in Nottingham, it's still possible to buy just about every spare part you need, from a replacement headlight, to a new seat, perhaps. To what looks like a complete chassis kit. Of course, the miner's survival relies heavily on enthusiasts, and it certainly attracts all kinds of people. For some, it's a case of concourse presentation, with cars looking better than when they left the factory. Crude castings are polished to mirror finish, and even the smallest detail is perfect. But for the more down-to-earth, driving is most definitely what it's all about. 50 miles an hour is uh, getting on for top speed. It makes a lovely roaring noise when it does it. <laughs> it makes people look around and think, what the heck's that noisy thing? And then they realise it's something quite innocent, like a very different Morris Minor. <laughs> but not everyone is a purist. This post office van is a wolf in sheep's clothing, with a high-performance Fiat engine under the bonnet. Do about over 100 top speed and under... 10 seconds, not to 60. What sort of reaction do you get when you go tearing past someone? Uh, surprised faces and annoyance mainly <laughs> from the people that have spent six or seven thousand pounds on the car. They get blown away by what they think is an old banger. But it's the original car, as designed by Sir Alec, that people covet now, especially with an open top. 40 years ago, the miner was well ahead of its time. Now it represents an older, slower world where speed doesn't matter. But as long as it's possible to trundle along in a convertible costing around £2,000, the miner will always be a classic. <laughs>